As a developer by trade myself, one thing that I really appreciate is good API support. Fortunately, there is a BI tool out there designed specifically with APIs in mind. Did you know that Dundas BI is one of the few business intelligence tools on the market today where APIs were not simply shoved in as an afterthought into the product after release? Our company, Dundas Data Visualization, comes from a 25 year background of building components for developers and APIs for developers. We know both of these very well. And it was the foremost thought when it came to developing Dundas BI. So it's actually so important to our management team that when we built the application, our development team was divided into two sides. You had the front end application doing all the web based material, and you had the back end doing all the server based material. Any feature that required communication between the two was done through a public API. Now, what does this mean to you? It basically means if you see us doing something on the front end, you could do it yourself via code. That's how open this application is. You don't see that very often. Let's look at an example on how you can use the REST API today to perform a function completely outside of Dundas BI. Oh, and I'm Jeff, and this is Off the Charts with Jeff. As I mentioned, everything in Dundas BI is focused on API, and there's several different APIs available depending on what you're trying to do. For the server side, if you want to create plugins or use the server application itself, you have the .NET API. You've got JavaScript for the front end, and you've got REST APIs for more specific functions. Let's look at a practical example. Let's say you have some function that you want to perform outside of Dundas BI's web UI. One example might be wanting to force the rebuilding of a data cube because you know that your data's changed and you don't want to wait till the next update cycle for it to pick up the data. In Dundas BI, all you have to do is right click on that data cube and select build warehouse to force this. But if we wanted to do this automatically using the API, we can. By clicking build warehouse, it'll automatically kick off the process to start the rebuild. But if we open the development tools and we switch over to the network tab, you can actually see the requests being made from the browser to the server side. Now, if I click on this warehouse button now, while it's open, you can see that there's a post being made. That post is to the API data cube warehouse REST API. This actually gives me enough information now to run over to the documentation and basically mimic that call being made and do the exact same thing that the browser just did outside of the BI tool itself. So here's the support site. Let's go to REST API and then navigate to DataCube and Warehouse, which gives us everything that we need and even includes some sample code. Now let's take this REST API and use it externally. I'm going to go into PowerShell in this case and use it first to log in to Dundas BI. So here's the code to do that, which you can see returns a session. This session ID can be used to do further requests. So now I'm going to use that same API I just showed you to call the rebuilding of that data cube completely without ever touching the Dundas BI web front end. And you can see that it's very quickly kicked off the process that it needs to just like that. Pretty cool stuff, huh? This has applications in embedded scenarios where you might have two applications and you might want to perform administrative tasks in one rather than the other. And it's also really good for quick IT usage. Really whatever you want to do here is open. If you want to learn more about different forms of coding in Dundas BI, take a look at our video called Extend Your Data with Dundas Script. This is a great one to show how you can use C Sharp to manipulate your data. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.